Sponsored by Brilliant. This outlet provides 120 volts alternating current. If we connect an oscilloscope, we find a single phase 60 hertz sine wave. Other countries use different voltages and frequencies. The AC power is produced by the electrical generator at the power station, which is some distance away. A generator just converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. Typically, they will produce three-phase AC electricity, meaning it outputs three separate sine waves which all occur at slightly different times on three different wires. Inside a basic generator, we find the main housing or stator, and then in the center is a magnet, which is attached to the rotor shaft. We then place three separate coils of wire within the stator. The rotor shaft attaches to basically anything that rotates. When the shaft rotates, the magnet will rotate, and this causes the magnetic field to also rotate. The magnetic field will then pass through each of the coils at a different time. If I rotate this magnet past this coil of wire, we can see it produces a sine wave. The magnetic field interacts with the electrons in the wire and forces them to move. Imagine the North Pole is pushing them away and the South Pole is pulling them back. The electrons are alternating their direction forwards and backwards. To prove this, we can use LEDs because LEDs only allow current to flow in one direction. So by connecting two LEDs in opposite directions, we can tell which direction current is flowing. At normal speed, it's a little hard to see, but in slow motion, we can clearly see that only one LED illuminates at a time, so the current is definitely flowing forwards and backwards in the sine wave. The magnet in our generator rotates and pushes the electrons forwards and then pulls them backwards. This will create a single phase alternating current with a sine wave which repeats every time the magnet makes a full rotation past the coil. The outlets in our homes provide either 50 or 60 hertz, meaning the sine wave repeats 50 or 60 times per second. To achieve that, the magnet needs to rotate thousands of times per minute. However, we can reduce the speed by extending the coil and adding another magnet, because that will reduce the time taken for the north and south pole to rotate past the coil. We can also use gearboxes to increase the rotational speed, but for now we will stick to a basic model. So we have a single phase generator. The voltage will start at zero, then increase up to the peak positive value, and then decrease back to zero. Then on the negative half, the value will increase to the peak negative value, and again decrease back to zero. This is what the sine wave is representing. Notice this value changes, but the voltage at the outlet is constant. I'll explain why later on in the video. We can use this to power a load like a lamp. The lamp will increase in brightness as the current alternates with the sine wave. As a side note, if you use the slow motion feature on your smartphone, you can see an incandescent lamp flicker because of the AC current, but it's too fast for the human eye to see. However, most lights are now LED, which are usually constant, so you probably won't be able to see these flicker. If we look at the output power of this generator, we can see it's not constant because of the sine wave. If we added another separate coil to the stator and positioned this 120 degrees away, then the coil will experience the change in magnetic field at a different time to the first coil. The voltage generated by the coil will increase and decrease at a different time so the sine wave will be delayed. This gives us two phases. We can see this will improve the output power, but there's still a gap. We can add another separate coil, 120 degrees from the second coil, and this will also experience the changing magnetic field at a different time to the other coils. And this gives us three phases. We can see this gives us a much more constant output power. The current is flowing back and forth in each phase. We can prove that with this small three-phase generator and some LEDs. We arrange the LEDs in pairs of opposite polarities so that only one will illuminate at any time depending on the direction of the current in the wire. We can see they are illuminating and in slow motion, we can clearly see the current is alternating direction. 
The coils in the generator are placed 120 degrees apart simply because that gives us even spacing of the sine waves that are produced. We can move the coil to any angle, but the sine wave will also move and we won't have equal spacing. By the way, you can download my Excel sheet and see how the angle changes as well as the instantaneous phase voltages. Links down below for that. We could add a fourth phase, a fifth phase or a sixth phase, but the generator becomes more and more complex and expensive. We would also need more cables, more control and protection equipment, complex transmission and distribution infrastructure, more complex transformers and motors, etc. It's then harder to balance the electrical network and it's very hard to synchronize generators to work together. So we instead settled on three phase for generators and equipment. Perfect. Oh, but unfortunately, each country decided to use a different voltage, different frequency and a different distribution design. Great. Notice on our generator, we have three coils, but six wires. These could all connect to individual loads, but notice the sine wave changes from positive to negative at different times, so the current flows at different times. This means we could join the ends of the coils and the ends of the loads together. That allows us to use just three wires, which is a lot cheaper. The current will flow back and forth on whichever phase happens to be going that way. We can see on the three phase current waveform at, for example, 180 degrees, phase A has zero amps flowing, phase B has positive current, and phase C has equal negative current flowing. This works great for equal three phase loads, but with this design, we can only connect across two phases. So, the voltage will be very high. We can't use this to power our outlets because it will just destroy our appliances. But if we reconfigure this into a wire connection, then we can run a neutral wire from the center point back to the center of the generator. We can also connect this point to ground, meaning that this point in the system is zero volts. If the current is balanced on all phases, then no current will flow on the neutral. However, if one phase increases to say 30 amps, then 20 amps will flow on the neutral. The neutral will carry the difference back to the generator or transformer to keep the system balanced. Because we now have a neutral, we can connect across just one phase and neutral. This gives us single phase. We're basically just connecting across one coil of the generator or transformer. We can do that on each phase or we can connect to all three phases for larger equipment like motors. This connects across two coils, but the phases occur at different times. So the voltage isn't quite double. It's just the difference between the two sine waves. We can either connect the three phases in Y or Delta configuration. There are different reasons, but basically if the loads were the same resistance or impedance and the phase to phase voltage was also the same, the current would be larger in a delta configuration because the loads connect across two phases, whereas the Y-connected loads connect to a zero point, so they experience different voltages. The delta can deliver much more power, but it can only power balanced three-phase loads. If you need a neutral, then we need to use a Y configuration. By the way, I have made these cool mugs with the three-phase basic formulas on, and there's also a PDF guide. Links down below if you'd like one. Each power station generates three phases. A transformer increases the voltage to hundreds of thousands of volts. This keeps the current and energy losses low over the long transmission distance. When it reaches a city, it enters another transformer, which reduces the voltage and distributes this on the sub-transmission lines. These might feed large industrial or commercial customers but it otherwise continues to a distribution substation where the voltage is again reduced and distributed along the streets to the properties. Typically, residential properties are provided single phase connections and commercial properties have three phase connections. Although some parts of the world do provide three phases to homes. Homes generally need less power because they have less stuff to power. So a single phase connection is usually fine. We can also convert single phase into three phase 
using a rotary converter. If we connect too many appliances to a single phase, we will overload the circuit and trip the breaker. Three phase allows us to distribute the power so that we can connect more appliances. A three phase heater will use more energy than a single phase version, but it produces more heat, so it does more work. The heat is also consistent, unlike the pulsating single phase version. We could use smaller heaters to get the same heat output with three phases. We can connect three heaters to the single phase, but they will all pulse at the same time. The same with electrical motors. Imagine three phase as three people taking turns to rotate the wheel, instead of just one. It's a smoother rotation and is easier to maintain momentum. The voltage and frequency at the outlets in the properties vary around the world. The multimeter shows a constant voltage value, but the voltage is actually varying significantly. We can see that in the sine wave. This constant value is the RMS voltage, which is lower than the peak voltage. We can easily find the peak voltage using this formula. If we know the peak voltage, then we can easily calculate the instantaneous voltage using this formula. The sine wave has equal positive and negative values for voltage and current. If we added these all together, we get zero. So we need a different way to calculate this. Someone realized that if we connected a DC voltage to a resistor, it produced heat and they could calculate this power. Then they applied an AC voltage and they kept increasing the peak voltage until it produced the same amount of heat. The DC voltage was around 70% of the peak AC voltage. So they did some complex maths and found that if they squared the instantaneous voltages to turn them all positive, then added them all together and took the mean value, then squared that value, they got the same AC voltage as the DC voltage. They called this the root mean squared voltage. And that is what our multimeter calculates, instead of showing a constantly changing value. The local distribution transformer is designed to provide different voltages around the world depending on the local regulations. In the UK and Europe, properties are typically provided 230 volt single phase or 400 volt three phase, which will also provide 230 volt single phase. In North America, domestic properties are typically provided 240 volt single phase for large appliances, or they can connect to half of that to get 120 volt for smaller appliances. Small commercial properties might be provided 208 volt three phase, which also provides 120 volt single phase. Larger properties might receive 480 volt three phase and 277 volt single phase. This will power large equipment and then another transformer will reduce this down to 208 volt three phase, 120 volt single phase when it's needed. We can also then convert single phase AC into DC using a rectifier, but that's a topic for another video. Electrical engineering requires a lot of complex maths, but our sponsor Brilliant is where you learn by doing. There's so many new courses, but I've really enjoyed their new vectors course. The graphics and interactions just make it so easy to visualize each step, and there was extra help if I needed it. Brilliant have thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming, and AI. All the key skills you need to become a brilliant engineer. They even have an app for on-the-go learning, making it easy to build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts. I think you'll enjoy this too, so you can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. Just visit brilliant.org forward slash the engineering mindset or you can scan the QR code. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Do check them out, links down below. Hey, I'd just like to give a huge shout out to our incredible Patreon and channel members. Thank you so much for supporting us. And if you'd like to see your name here, along with priority access to our content and behind the scenes footage, Links down below for how to join.